Hello, you beautiful beings from all over the world. I'm Nick Smith. I hope you'll join me as we dive deep into the world of being. Today, we are going to unlock transformative highlights uh, with some of our stellar lineup of experts. So these masterclasses will be loaded with live Q&As, exclusive access, and enlightening moments. So don't just watch, experience. Join us on an unparalleled journey of discovery and growth. The ultimate Birmingham experience starts now. I think on that QR code, we're going to have to have people pause so that they can see it and scan it. But the problem is they're watching this on their phones. <laughs> they're like, I can't get this. So we there are, are so many in. ways. There's so many ways. So as you're watching this, this is streaming live to a, a ton of platforms. Uh, your comments will be streamed onto the screen. So we hope you'll share those with us. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first off, we don't bring any other guests onto the show. So it'll be just who you see here speaking. But you can post Q&A right in the comments and we'll pull those on and answer those as we get going. And I'm loving the eyeballs showing up on the screen here. It's just going crazy. We've got hearts and likes already. So as we dive in, I'm going to just start by introducing our incredible guests. Uh, today, we are joined in a special episode in the TUB 24 Masterclasses as we have two titans joining our conversation. First, we welcome Fiona Ross, the Queen of Kings, a powerhouse whose life journey spans the vibrant world of 1980s hairdressing to the spiritual tapestry of India, showcasing resilience, passion, and an unwavering dedication to personal growth. Alongside her is Matt, the visionary force behind the TUB24 event, He's a free thinker with laser-focused determination. His heart expands faster than the universe, and his leadership style is as direct as they come, reminiscent of a grand oak, sturdy, protective, and grounded. Does that sound like you at all? Uh, funnily enough, someone else said something similar once. <laughs> yeah, I think this sounds really familiar. So together, we're going to dive into their experiences, challenge, and the secrets that have shaped their lives. So let's get started. Welcome to the show, Fiona and Matt. Thank you, hey, Nick. Matt. It's such a delight to be here. It's good to have you here. We're, we're going to free flow through this conversation for about an hour today, and I'll pull the comments as best I can. But, you know, the, the one question that we want to start with always is, what does it mean to you to be? What does that word mean? Ladies first. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> what does it mean to be? This, you know, this has been an exploration really of, of the last two years of my life to really understand that we're always being. We're always being something. It's mm. just are we consciously choosing who we're being? And are we really authentic about who we're being? Or are we being something we don't want to be? And the last two years of my life has has been a journey of crafting consciously who I'm being at all times. And that alone has been the missing link. I've been in personal development for many, many years, and I've studied all sorts of different things. And honestly, there's always been a lack of sustainability in the, in the results that most personal development gives. And understanding that we can can create who we are at our core and live by that is the missing link. It's the thing that makes personal development sustainable. Awesome. So being you at your core, right, mm -hmm. which ties into being authentically yourself, right? Yeah. And uh, Matt, what about you? Do you have a version of that? Yeah. I mean, for me, it it's the allowance and the possibility of who I can be at any moment. Like Fiona says, it, it's that where you can come from and the belief in that any moment you can be whoever you want. Um, you know, I, I, when I kind of first picked up the book and, and had that first reading of it, you know, for me, there was a, an acceptance of I'm allowed to be me. And that unleashed a whole world of possibility of, you know, who I can be. 
Uh, and so for me, that whole being concept opened up an entire world of allowance and acceptance of who I really am. Yeah. And how does that affect how you interact with others? God, how doesn't it affect it? Um, hmm. You know, I, I show up in a far better manner for everyone around me, including myself. Um, you know, the last 18 months as kind of we've been through all this, it it's kind of, well, supercharged it all. Hmm really has yep. supercharged it. Fiona, do you have the same same view there or is it a little different? Yeah. Well, for me, it's it's no longer a question of how do I do something. It's always the question of who do I need to be hmm. to do something. And, and that brings pretty much anything I want to do into my sphere of, of agency. It all becomes a choice. It, it takes the fear away. Yeah, I so love what, uh, for me, Chris this this being piece allows me to center back, as Matt said, to a place to come from, and not get caught up in the the how hole. The how do how do I do this? How's that going to yeah. happen? The trust that you have that you know who you are and what you're capable of. Well, you guys took on something, and I'll. I think. I'll, I'll talk about what Chris Smith said. And, and if I cut you off, Fiona, it cut me back off like at any time. Uh, Chris Smith, you know, when, when he came on and talked to us the other day about, uh, about being and letting the being uh, speak, letting the being show up in your world and let the being uh, do, do your activity uh, was very powerful. And you guys have, have bitten off something that is enormous. Like you talked about the hell hole. Jen Walter talks about the hell hole and we get stuck in that and we can't come out of it. And, and when you guys created this, there was no how on, on how to create to you be 24, right? Matt, I mean, this was you, I remember you reaching out to me going, bro, I've got a crazy idea. Can you speak to that? I think you've just summed it up in some very short words. It, it was a crazy idea. It was a crazy vision. And yet it was born out of a want to do something, you know, completely for everyone else other than me. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it absolutely was that. No clue how we're going to do it, but we know it's got the potential to be the most incredible event for everyone who's there. Let's right. go. Why would the, I remember the, the phone call, call Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Are you with Fiona, me on this, Fiona? <laughs> I've never been shy yeah. from the audacious ask part. I'll I'll say that. Yeah. Well, it was audacious. And and you know sure. what's right? Um, yeah, and what's really present for me in in Matt's ask and yes, it's a it's it's a big thing to 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 create an event like this in the way that it, that we're creating it. But I've never been so sure about anything in my life. You know, are there moments in the middle of the night where I wake up and go, Oh, there have been, I have to admit, but the, the assuredness, the, the surety that I have, the commitment, because we've committed to doing this, there's no, there is no way out now. You know, we're, we're in, we're, we're both feet in. And, yeah. um, and that commitment person. creates, that creates miracles. That creates an amazing team. We've got some incredible people that are supporting us. Um, and there's one of them, Andreas. Yeah. Um, that are giving their time and giving their energy and, and being for us in creating this event for everyone who's going to attend and the experience that they're going to have in, in the shift in their being, which is going to have ripple effects in their lives, in their relationships. And, and we're going to get to give money to a really deserving charity. Beautiful. You know, Fiona, you lifted up a book. Will you hold that back up again? And there may be people watching this that don't know about this book. It's called The Ultimate Coach by Amy Hardison and Alan Thompson. And uh, how has this book influenced what you guys are creating? And why should somebody read this? 
Oh, you announce a match? How, hasn't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> when we talk about ripples, I mean, that book has started ripples for all of us. You know, all of us are all together here because of that book. You know, we've we've all read it. And then, you know, for, for some of us, you know, working with Fee, we, we did the London event after Matt kind of came out with an audacious act last uh, December. And, and that book has created ripples. And I would say to anyone who doesn't know about it, read it. And as the book says, read it about you. And if you're open to actually taking on board the lessons in it and the things that are present in that book, it can genuinely change your life. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I've I've read a lot of stuff and it is probably the most powerful and influential book I've read in terms of transforming who I am. Right. Fiona, similar feelings around that? So this is the only book I've read six times in my life. You know, I, there's not there's not many books that I pick up and read, especially books of, of this magnitude. It's you know, it's it's not a it's not a little book. Um and each time I read it, it's almost like reading it for the first time. And it was, I mean, it's only been out for not even well, two years this November, I think, is is actually how long it's been around. So when I read this book, what's pertinent in my life is is lift, lifts itself out of the pages. So as my life evolves and as I change and shift in who I'm being, the messages that I receive from reading the book are different. So what I got out of it the first reading and what I got out of it the last reading are completely different insights. So I, I read the same stories. And when Matt said about reading it about you, I struggled a little bit with that on the first, the first reading. I didn't really quite understand what that meant. How do I read about the life of Steve Hardison and all that he went through in life? And read it about me because he's lived a completely different life than I've led. I mean, apart from the very obvious fact, we're a different gender. Um, right. We've lived we've lived totally different lives. So I think on my first reading, I, I really read it about him, and I and I and I came out of it thinking, "Wow, what an amazing man he is, and what an amazing life he's led, and the things that he's done to to change who he is, who he is being." And I think the second time I read it, I learned about what an amazing person I am and what amazing things I've done in my life and who, who, how my being can change to incorporate whatever I want it to. Yeah. Yeah. This is beautiful. I, I look at that as an example of what's possible for each of us and what you guys are doing as well is, is a demonstration of what's possible uh, I think of Steve Jobs' quote where he said, you you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only do that looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect. And when it comes to creating grand visions, this, this book lays a foundation for what's possible in another human being. And so when you read it about yourself, you're really seeing in the journey of Steve Hardison what's possible for you. That's, that's what he's trying to demonstrate there. Mm-hmm. Now, you guys take this book and you create this event that is – it could be seeming as an impossible feat, right? Something that is not here in the world. It wasn't here when you had the idea. It is a creation. Um, I want to. I want to speak to the power of declaration, the power of commitment. The word declaration means to assert your commitment, right, uh, to something. And even the commitment to create the TUB twenty four event was a declaration. This is. I'm claiming it. And it wasn't even here yet. But Matt, you started having a vision for it before it was even here. Can you talk about how you visioned this? Oh. One second. One second. Come here, Jess. Come and say hello. What's up, Jess? Come say hello. Say, say, Hi, Jess. This, that, this is part of the vision. Right. Beautiful. So... After running London and oh, hey, oh. after running London, we knew that there could be something more. We knew that it could be bigger, we could do more. And 
I've always known where the ICC is. You know, I've been there for events myself. It's, you know, next door to where me and Kate go on date night. And every time I'd kind of been there, I'd always said, what if? Mm -hmm. I'd always had a what if around the ICC. And it it was just one of those things that was like a niggle in the back of my head. And it just one day it was just like, why not? And if I didn't, I knew I'd regret it. it. It was a, we can do more. We can go bigger. We can raise more for charity. We can give more away. We can impact more people. <laughs> and if I didn't, I'd regret it. Hmm. Uh, and so, you know, the, the dots, like you say, they all started aligning in front of me. And knowing that there was this incredible place that had so much energy just waiting to be used in the right manner it was a we have to do this mm. yeah fiona do you yeah. have more to add to that yeah the the um i i think i think actually having jess put, popping her head in there is is really perfect timing and um Behind Matt's desire to create a being event that can serve many, many people, um, there's a part in the in the Ultimate Coach where Amy tells a story of, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, story of a of a woman who who grow who had grown up deaf, and she was always amazed that when her when her, her mother went to the front door, there was always somebody there. And when she went to the front door, there wasn't. And she she didn't even realize she could she could there was something called hearing. She didn't realize that that was what was going on. And and Matt's daughter Jess grew up in the first four years of her life being unable to hear. And so the Birmingham Children's Hospital is really close to Matt's heart because they gave his daughter hearing and the impact that that has had on his family, on Jess as a, as a, as a being, but on his entire family and him, I don't think any of us can imagine what that journey is to, to bring hearing to a, to a human being. If we can't hear the world, we can't speak our creations into the world. And so you have the ICC and Birmingham Children's Hospital really close together. And, and Matt and his wife, Kate, spend their date nights kind of between in the middle. And it's got so much meaning for, for Matt. This is beyond, oh, I think I'll do an event. This is a life-changing give back to something that profoundly affected Matt and his family. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. And so to be part of that, I mean, what an honor to, to bring hearing to children so they can be in the world differently, to give back to for the the operation and, and the support that their entire family has had. And to raise the being awareness of 1500 people who will be attending that event. Yeah. Wow. So the, the charity element of this is that you will have hard expenses, but the tickets are, are covering the costs and the proceeds, the, pro, the profits, profits are going back to the charity. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. of all profits will go to the charity. There's not one of us is taking any payment or kickback or anything from the speakers. And we've got some really amazing speakers who get paid handsomely to speak at events. And yeah. they're coming and giving their time. And then many of them are flying from the States and other parts of the world, and they're carving out time to be with us. So just the value they're giving in their time is you know, if we could, if we could put a, a pound sign or a dollar sign in front of all the time that's being given by all uh, the people that are contributing to creating this event, this is a, I couldn't imagine how many millions of, of pounds it would take to put this event on if people weren't 
giving their time. And for those that don't know, the pound is the British version of the dollar. It's money. <laughs> <laughs> you weirdos. It's not just a weight. <laughs> yeah. Matt, uh, I'm going to pull up your, I'm going to pull up your slides here. I think this is a time to share what, what's going on. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's pull this up and I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to throw it there that way, but tell us uh, about this event. Uh, tell us about the, um, the venue a little bit. Okay. So, I mean, this, this, we put yeah. this together. I mean, this was a couple of slides, you know, this is what, this is London. This is what got us the bug. You know, this is where I met Fiona. Um, you know, we didn't even know each other until we started working on this project together. Um, so yeah, we had kind of three months of mad, insane, nonstop per time putting together what was the London event. And, you know, we had Alan Thompson on stage. We had Karan, we had Steve, we had Amy, you know, it, it, it was just a brilliant day from what I remember and what I've been told. Um, and that night, you know, I mean, I've said this before, I, I drove away from London going, that was amazing. And yet there's more. Mm. I always knew that there could be more following that. You know, we, we felt the energy in that room. We saw how, you know, people walked away from there with such an amazing buzz and and transformation yeah. right and lives yeah. were transformed in that room i i still had some i mean no word of a lie a couple of months ago i had someone message me on linkedin and they said oh i've just seen your profile were you the guy who ran london you know i didn't even know who this person was i didn't know he was in the room and yet he kind of recognized me going ah it's you you know mm. people remember it for being an amazing day that they took away so much from um so yeah, this is this is what started the whole thing for us to say, okay, this, this can do some real good in the world, and we can be part of that. Mm. So that's where it kind of all stemmed from. Um, if you go we, forward, we, yeah. Would you say that's the inspiration? So you know, people get inspired, and that word meaning to breathe yeah. into, and so this breathed into yeah. you this this idea, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I think mean, I think massive. this. I was just going to say the the original inspiration came from Judy Thurzen, who who yeah. did the very first event in Phoenix when the book was first launched, and um, and I think the thing about all of these events is they are brilliant ideas that have no budget behind them. They're not it, there's there's not some organisation going hey well here's here's the deposit and everything. It's just created we we created out of what's available and the people that buy tickets are literally part of that creation. And, so, so and before, Judy put on an event in Phoenix, which in yeah. fact, I, I remember being able to come and give you a big hug, Nick. Right. Um, and then on the back of that, Matt Smith had this crazy idea to put London on, which was a, an event for 500 people. So this is this this kind of snowballs. It snowballs from a from a simple conception of an idea that was that was had by Judy, and she convinced that Steve that it was a great idea to put it on, and it went ahead. and And this is another avatar of that idea. I don't think any one person can can claim responsibility for any no. one of these events. It is a co creation of many many amazing people who all give. An abundance I, of service. Yeah, that's I want to highlight. Threat. There's a there's a process here. I want to highlight this because this is powerful for people that that you could be somewhere and have an inspiration, and that inspiration can stew in you, right? It can create this idea of what if, what if, what if, and then why not, right? Comes in, and you think why not, and you start turning that inspiration into a creation, and you speak it and declare it to the world, and you you declare it. This is, I've created this. This is mine. I'm claiming it. I'm declaring it. I'm asserting my commitment to create this. And what you see on the screen here is a a demonstration of what happens when you get really clear on what you're creating and you declare it, right? Because every one of these people on the screen right there are enrolled 
and not just them, many others are enrolled in that vision because of the clarity of it, because it was spoken, because others were invited to be a part of it. And the enrollment happened by how you guys were showing up, right? Can you speak to enrollment? I think for me, the biggest enrollment in this, Nick, is purpose. Hmm. Pe people get why we're doing it. They, they understand that this is just about pure service in every direction. It's not about any form of ego. It's not about any form of wealth generation. Well, personal wealth generation. This right. is something yeah. that they, you know, everybody involved in this has come at it from a point of giving. And th there is nothing more to it. This is about giving, you know, all the speakers that we have got lined up here are giving and they are going to be giving in a massive way in their time, their commitment, their own personal funds mm -hmm. to give to the people in the room. And that giving creates a snowball effect of giving a huge charity donation to a very worthwhile cause. And, you know, in the coaching world, uh, you know, what, what better way is there to kind of give back than to helping children to hear and to listen one of the foundations of the coaching principles so the whole thing is just so interconnected from a pure purpose driven give mm. Mm. and i think on the enrollment nick is is that piece around ultimately what we're all looking for is to belong and what this event has is the invitation to come and be with us and belong in this event. This isn't us doing an event for others. It's a creation of event that we're all part of. Not, not any one person is, is the sole reason for this event. And everyone is the sole reason for this event. So, by buying a ticket, you're creating it. By giving your time, you're creating it. By being for us, even if you can't make it yourself and you tell someone else about it, you're creating it. And that gives this sense of belonging, of being something bigger than just yourself. That, that becomes the declaration, right? Your purchasing of the ticket becomes what you did with the event. So on a grand scale, you've got this big event. You declared it. You stepped into it. You reserved the building. You started inviting people. So a person buying their ticket is that declaration of, I'm in. I'm there in London. You know, this is, this is happening in Birmingham, right? And so then the rest comes in. All the magic and the miracles come into play to make sure that you're there at that time, I, I, I feel like when we speak our visions, we push them out by, by saying, I will do this one day. I would like to do that mm. one day. It would be nice if I could do that one day. And it's always mm. pushed out into the future. And, and when you spoke this into reality, it, it wasn't that. It's, it's like what Catherine Lee describes as a memory of things yet to be. It's this is. It's just not here yet. Right? Yeah. Can you talk about the power of that, of that purposeful declaration? I think for me, there was an intermediate step. For me, there was almost, a, I could see all this, I could tie all the dots up, and yet there was almost a, if not me, then who? And it was about that accountability and saying, if I don't do this, hmm. would anyone else? And and so there was there was kind of a few things all in the background as this all kind of formed that was a what's possible do we know how to do it no absolutely not and yet like i said before I, I knew that if i didn't push the button and kind of drag a few people into this and say let's go i would regret it yeah and so it became a, a, a claiming of yours, an anticipation, the word anticipate meaning to bring forward before it's time. And, and then in that anticipation, the activity. So how do you distinguish between being and doing? Can we ask that question? Distinguish between being and doing? Yeah. 
Um, well, the being starts. The being starts it. Hmm. There is no doing without a being behind it. And the success of anything is is down to who who you're actually being. It's as Steve said so beautifully, and I remember this when I was in Phoenix at the first event. When he when I first heard him explain the being is the seed of doing. So if you plant a, an apple seed and expect a pear tree to grow and to harvest watermelons, it's never going to happen. Mm. You plant an apple seed, you hopefully, if you nurture it in the right, right way, it will become an apple tree and the seed of that tree will be apples. So the seeds of being that, that Matt first was his inspiration, this service and giving back and creating something incredible for children who can't hear and, and all of the alignment to the work of Steve Hardison and all the many people that, that are in alignment with that, that's the being of this event. It's, it's founded in such wholesome intentions. The result is going to be of the same. It will be, you know, if we're planting apple seeds, we're going to harvest apples. Right. So the, the, the element of, of love and compassion and service that everyone is planting in this garden, the people that have attend this event are they're going to go away with apples, right? Not literally. Although, <laughs> maybe we could we have a get batch apples of apples there, right? An apple farm. <laughs> we could have apples. Only green ones. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, uh, I'm going to continue on the slides here, Matt. Um, tell us yeah, a little so, bit more, um, and, and you guide me along as we go through this. Okay, so this is this is the main auditorium. This is the stage. You know, I mean, um, I remember <laughs> there was a phone call with Fee once, and it was a case of you have to come and have a look at this. And there was a little bit of a, oh, what, well, are we going to do the Midlands? Are we going to go back to London? And I was like, just, just go with me here. Come and have a look at it. And yeah. What, what were your words on that stage? I don't think I can repeat them in public. Oh, it, it, it's, um, it, it, it is, it's a, it's an amazing room. And, it, and I know that picture is of empty seats, but standing on that stage and, and imagining all those beings in that room, The collective, for me, the collective uh, spirit or the collective mind or the, the, the collectiveness of all the people in that room is going to create an, a whole other space. That's a big it's stone just most to grow, right? It, that is yeah. a ripple from that. Yeah. The thing yeah. I love about that and and – I kind of got it the first time I, you know, I knew that room. And yet when I went in there, kind of the the time when we were talking about where do we go and, you know, getting the right venue, the beautiful part of it is, is that it's actually small enough and close enough to contain that energy and mm. that collective kind of sense of, you know, you're not just lost in a sea of four or 5,000 people. It's still close enough to have that really, close knit community sense of belonging. I, I could know every person in there. It's still got that really tight connection. And that will be that was always the intention, you know, the, the fact that you can still be as close as you are to all these amazing speakers. You can kind of, you know, you're you're with them. It's not that it's just a you're at the back of some arena. It it had the feel to be sort of energetically correct. And mm -hmm. And that's what really kind of hit me that, you know, when I kind of went into there and I was like, yeah, th this is it. Hmm. And the beautiful thing about this venue is we don't just have that room. We have another yeah. room that is, um, that will, there, it will be set with, with tables and seated areas. So we're going to be able to move people. They're not just going to be sitting in a seat for two days. We're going to be able to move them around this space so they'll get an opportunity to be with and connect with other people 
we have a Facebook group where already we have one that is for people who would like to go and, and are interested in going. And then we have another one for the people who have put purchased tickets. So once you buy a ticket, you get into another Facebook group where you start to connect. So by the time you get to, to there in May, you will have had conversations with all sorts of people that you've never met before, but you're all going to meet on that day for that weekend. And that's that's a really special element of the of this creation. It's so, not just, hey, come and see somebody singing or, you know. Right, right. All the audience you know, is going to have a connection before they get there. Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And as you're describing this, I, I just see this pattern between all of this. And I just want to highlight it for those that are watching, because this is a creation in your own world. This is a demonstration of what it takes to envision something that's not here yet, to take it from the ethereal to the material. And as you're standing on that stage and you're looking out in front of it, you are seeing the people in the seats, not will see the people in the seats. You are seeing them in the seats. You are seeing the ripple effect of those people. You're feeling the power and the emotion of this stage. You're seeing people connecting in that other room. And notice the speaking of this is all in the present tense. We're not pushing it out. You've already seen this before it happens. Lydia Nibley calls that a pre-membering, right? You are, you're mm -hmm. having the vision before the vision is realized. And you're seeing it so clearly that it creates this anticipation and a bringing forward and pulling into this reality of that vision. And, and the words that you're using, the imagination and more, are just a demonstration of this. You guys have seen this vision so clearly that now when others hear this vision, they know exactly what to enroll in. They're enrolled in the vision because it's so clear, right? What does that bring up for you as you hear that? It kind of just makes me think because I have constantly got running through my brain all the things that are going to happen over those two days. Mm. Like you say, there's there's a whole vision and concept that is, you know, each speaker, how they're introduced, all the staging, the backdrops, you know, the fireworks, the music. All I was going to say thing. the fireworks. <laughs> yes. Believe me, we're going to have some fun with this the as music. well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, just, and, it and is an experience. It's not an event. It's an experience. Yeah. It's 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 more it's more immersive than an event. It's it's a, you're going to be in this event. You will be part of it. Hmm. This is not come and just listen to people talk for two days and just sit on your ass. This this is going to be <laughs> an experience, an event. Yeah, you know, a production. We want the lot. We want you know. I genuinely want to give everyone the best experience that they could ever have at this event. And I want them yeah. to walk away with so much value. And I want them to walk away knowing that they have created value. You know, it, it is just so multifaceted in all, all areas of what we want to produce for everyone. Right. Yeah. So the charity, we talked a little bit about the charity. And so we've gone over why, um, let me, I'm going to, yeah. unless there's more to share there. No, we talked about so, Justin's I mean, story a little bit. Do you want to go yeah, in a so, little deeper? Yeah, I mean, just so you know, anyone who watches this can get a little bit of a feeling of where this comes from and why it means so much to me. Um, with Jess, you know, we we had a really rocky start. Um, you know, she was our first child, and she was born in a little bit of a storm. Let's say um we didn't know if she was coming out of hospital she was in intensive care so like some babies are kind of kept in intensive care and warmed up she was like a little polar bear and cooled down so that was her at one day old um and that that was quite rocky you know we we didn't know what was going to go on with her um when she came out uh i think one of the the most hard hitting things to deal with as a parent is being told that your child won't be able to hear and you know from from my own personal life you know i've got a real background with music and you know i've always had music in my life and being a drummer some people might say that's not music but there's an argument there but um but yeah you know for for me and for kate you know you have all these things go through your head of what's life going to be like for her what's going to be life like for our family and our extended family and you know, you, you run through a hell of a lot of stories. And I mean, 
it takes I, I deny I defy anyone to say that they just roll with it and not worry um or have a few thoughts um so yeah but what ended up happening was even though she failed to test there was some signs that there was something that she could hear so if you go to the next photo buddy So for the first kind of three, four years of Jesse's life, we spent every couple of months going to audiology and having tests. And this this woman in the photo is Verity with Jess. Um, she now is up in Scotland running part of their audiology area. Um, and we had to have these constant tests about what she can hear and what she can't hear. And they, they told us that she's got a really rare condition called auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. And it means that your whole hearing is like a badly tuned radio. You can hear some bits, you can't hear other bits. It comes, it goes, it fades, it comes back in. It's like static. You know, her hearing was so mixed. And we were seeing that, you know, her, her speech and her language development and, and everything else around that. It, it was all, um, let's say, delayed. So we we had a choice and they said to us, look, you know, at the age of four, they said, we're pretty sure that this is the condition that she has. And we had the option of either let her run with it and see how it goes or have cochlear implants. And we'd already heard about cochlear implants from uh, a charity down south called the Elizabeth Foundation. They do amazing work with you know, children down on the coast, Portsmouth Way. And we'd heard from some young adults about what cochlear implants had done for them. And we'd heard them talk and they, they came and gave a, a bit of a speech about it all. And we were kind of like, why wouldn't we? You know, it's a 95% success rate. OK, there's a 5% chance. But for her, we believed it was absolutely the right thing to do for her. So we said, OK, let's go with it. So if you go next. So this was Jess just kind of after her fourth birthday in Birmingham Children's Hospital. And little did she know what was really about to happen that day. But that that's the, the photo of the last photo of her before she went into surgery. Holy cow. So And, and that's that's where they actually did the surgery. So what they did is they they do an incision just behind the ear and uh, they place a plate uh, a receiver into kind of between the skin and the, the cranium look at me technical cranium school um, and there's a wire that goes from this receiver all the way down into her ear and it's got little electrodes and so uh, they put these in and then that was her the day after the surgery with her sister and sympathy bandages i want to be like my big sister <laughs> I might need some of those, Matt. Yeah, we, we can get you some. Bandages. Yeah. That's so sweet. Sympathy bandages, bless her. <laughs> and and that, that's the photo from actually inside Jess's ear. Oh. So you can actually see where the the electrodes go all the way around. And, um, yeah, that, that's her being a giant in the world. You know, it, it's genuinely the best decision we have ever made for her, and it is – it's truly changed her life and and everyone around her. Okay, I I'm... cannot say how big an impact it has been. Her speech, her language, her development, her friendship groups. Her life has changed by having that surgery from those amazing people at that amazing hospital. That is amazing. I, I'm a little biased, man. I'm loving that hat that she's wearing. <laughs> well, I, I am <laughs> I am going to take free reign and pull rank here slightly and say that, Mr. Smith, I want to thank you so much for the gift you're giving to this with your book and what you're allowing us to do. So for anyone who doesn't know this, Nick wrote an amazing book called Giants and Smalls. Anyone who doesn't know Nick, I thoroughly encourage you to A, get hold of him and B, read the book that he wrote, which is the equivalent of being in a childlike story and yet it's the most adult based childlike story ever to me it's an amazing book and for those who don't know nick has said that we can go 
freelance, print as many copies of that book and give it out to the children's hospital as part of this event. And he wants nothing for it. So it's a huge thank you from me to you, Mr. Smith. I think that's us beautiful. That. Yeah. These, these monies that are coming in will help to contribute to that. And uh, now you got me emotional. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Is there more to share here? Nope. We're done there. So I'm going to pull this back off. Um, I, you, you two are a demonstration of being, you know, if, if we use the analogy of an acorn earlier, you had in your bio, the oak tree, uh, the oak tree springs from the acorn. Lao Tzu said that thousands of forests spring from a single acorn. And things like this express from your way of being. They, they come from it. You know, Rich Litvin says that vision isn't where you're going. It's what's coming from you. And if you look at this vision, it's an expression of what's going on inside of you. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a thing. It, as, as you step into your potential in the interior and here, this can't help but come out of you. And we had somebody on our show the other day. She said, people are like toothpaste. What's in them comes out when you squeeze them, right? <laughs> and if we squeezed right. you guys, there'd be a TUB event in there, right? And a lot, and a lot of expletives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's such a demonstration. You know, if somebody's watching this and you're thinking, I don't know how I can afford this. I don't know how I can afford to be there. Maybe if you're traveling overseas and tickets, you know, on a flight are 2,500 bucks plus the seat. This is where the miracle comes in, even for me, right? Is the demonstration of I'm there, I'm buying a ticket, even if I don't know how I'm going to do it, right? Then it allows room for that commitment to become expression of who you are. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, that in between, right, doesn't doesn't help. So, go ahead, Fiona. It, it, you speak to that commitment piece of of when when you commit, it's a choice. You're in, and and you're not going back. Commitment is I'm stepping forward and I'm in. There's no kind of like wow. Well, it's a bit like when you as a woman. When, when you're pregnant, it's like you're not a little bit pregnant. You're not slightly pregnant. You're either not pregnant or you're pregnant. There's no in-between. And, and it's the same kind of thing that yeah. when we committed to this, we were like, okay, we're in. And you're over, you're over, in, you're in a new space. You're over a line in a completely different space. And from that space of commitment, that's when everything just starts to happen. People start coming in and going, well, you can use my book or you can print as many as you like, give them to the children. People come in and go, I'll, I'll come and speak. I'll fly from the States and I'll, I'll come speak at your event. And people want to be part of it. And, and I, I know Steve Hardison, again, I listened to him in Phoenix when he said, commitment's like a black hole. It just draws everything towards it. And that's what's happening here is mm. the commitment to the event, the commitment that, that Matt demonstrated in his first, are you in? That's, that's, that's the, the nucleus of this. And everything else just gets drawn in. I love this. Can I, can I speak to something real quick, Matt, and then I'll let you hang on to that. I'm just thinking that Fiona's just yeah. said I'm really dense like a black hole. I'm just trying to work out how to take that. <laughs> yeah, is that a compliment? With love. Or? With love. Yeah. Well, so the, the word interest, right? If I'm interested, that word interest means in between. In between. And if we think in terms of money, interest is the in between from the initial investment and what was returned, the in between. And when we're mm -hmm. interested in things, we're in between. So there's no movement because we're in the in-between. And that, that's what happens when there's no decision, that word decision meaning to cut off, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, that commitment becomes the black hole because you move out of interested and you move out of choosing to decision, to cutting off. No, this is what we're doing. This is the black hole. This will attract everything I need to it, right? 
Um, it's, it just seems to be a vital element to not just speak your dreams, but to commit to your dreams, even when you don't know how you're going to create them. And would you guys say you don't know how you're going to do this? You're just, it's no, showing we, up. We don't know how it's going to happen. Yeah. And do you know, if we got lost in trying to work out the how, I don't think we would have even begun mm. because the how looks so impossible. I mean, one of the things that I, that I wanted to mention while Matt was speaking earlier was um, you, we spoke about enrollment. So we, we went to the ICC and, and we spoke to the young lady, Lucy, who's the events lady there. And we enrolled her in this vision. And we was, I remember we were sitting on a sofa backstage behind the, the curtain and we were telling her about everything. And, and she was explaining how you hire this international center. I mean, it's not just some little fly by night back street somewhere. This is a major event venue. And, you know, then you have the, you, the, they, they vet you and they look at your accounts and they look at them. We went, ah, we don't have any of that. We don't even have the deposit right now. But we will create it. You will be paid. And we enrolled the whole ICC finance team into this vision. Mm. And they have never, ever hired this venue to it to a person and they have never ever done it without a, an upfront deposit and they're doing all of this because they believe in the event we're creating mm. and they are being so supportive and so amazingly helpful and accommodating they had we we gifted a, a book to a, an ultimate coach book to Lucy, and she's read it, and she's in, so she's committed. She's committed her boss and her finance director, and she's committed all the people that needed to be okay with us creating the event at the ICC. Mm. So these little miracles that are going going on all come from the seed of being. That, that word miracle, you just use that. I'm going to pull this up. It's a thing that makes you smile when you think of it, right? A miracle <laughs> really is, is something that makes you smile when you think that that is so crazy how that came about. Serendipity. If we knew the how, if we controlled the how, we would miss out on the miracles, right? Mm -hmm. And if we knew the how in advance, we would never take a step because we'd be overwhelmed by what has to go into our, our creation. There's a blessing in blindness, there's a blessing in stepping in by faith and trusting, right? And, mm. and that's the beauty of what you've demonstrated here, Matt, from the time you called me and you said, this is what I'm thinking, dude. And, and uh, are you in? I said, yeah, I'm in. Let's do this. And then other people are in and they're saying, yes, yeah, so let's do this. It, it, it moved you to commit even more. And would you say that you are not, you don't have fear going on inside as you step into this? Or are you just completely calm and at peace with everything? Uh, no, there's or, lots of or fear. Some turmoil. And, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about that. Is that okay in creation to have that going on while you're stepping into your creation? Yeah. You know, it, I mean, it I, happens I just, when I don't. Sorry, Matt. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I could completely lie and say, yep, yeah, I'm massively zen. This is all good. Don't worry about it. The universe has my back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that no. rose. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know what? Absolutely, I have moments where I go, "Holy shit, what have I bitten off here?" Hmm. And yeah, I know that the cause is enough for me to sort out, no matter what I need to do. Yeah. And um, and yet, yeah, you know what? Is it going to be plain sailing? Is it going to be easy? Nope. But I look at this and it is just a huge potential. It's a gift. I genuinely think that I am, what's the word? It's almost like an honor to be able to do this. Yeah. Be able to host. It is an honor people. to be able to do it. Yeah. You know, to host the people that we are hosting on that stage, you know, they are incredible. Every one of you, I include you two. 
you know, don't forget that you are, you know, you're both fundamental in this of gifting your time and your effort, especially you, Fiona, the amount of hours you put into this. You know, I am I am absolutely blessed to have the people that I have around me as part of the team and the extended team, the speaking team, you know, everyone who is giving to this. It's fear inducing. And I realize how lucky I am to actually be whatever I am in this, you know, call, call me whatever you want as part of this event. But where I sit, yep, I'm bricking it. Yep, it's amazing. Yep, it's a gift. And it's a bit like a roller coaster. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I, you know, there's there's part of me that can't wait for it to actually be there because it will be amazing. You know, I am I'm sitting here excited as hell. You know, every day I get up kind of half half fear, how the hell am I gonna do everything that we need to do? And half, oh my god, how amazing is this gonna be? It is an absolute emotional roller coaster. And I know that the end result is going to be something spectacular for people. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And, and that fear is for me is when I forget. It's, it's when I forget who I'm being and, and, and the, the faith I have in, our, our ability to create consciously. If I forget that, which usually happens if I wake up in the night, um, and that's when I get when my head gets buzzing and I start playing images that aren't helpful. And and then I I mean I have my document. It re, it realigns me every single day, and I know that this. I think the other thing is if if you start listening to naysayers who in their world find this a bit of a, a a large step to take and they go, yeah, but how, how are you going to do that? Oh, that's going to, it's like, I, I really don't, I can't listen to the naysayers. We're in, we're going, the train has started, it's rolling, it's moving. We're going to be there. Mm. And uh, this event is happening. It's not will happen. It already is happening. It is happening. And, you know, one thing I would invite, uh, Rose had a really great comment here is those in the interest group may not even realize that they're in the in-between being their way to commitment. And, and so moving yourself from interested to committed, even if you don't know how you're going to get yourself there or the hotel or food or time or any of that, buy your ticket, buy your ticket, let the miracles play out. And and let it play we, out the way it needs to. We right? had a lovely, um, yeah, we had a lovely situation in the early uptake, people buying tickets. And I don't remember who it was, but a, a lady gets, I don't know who I'm taking. I haven't met him yet, but I'm, but, but she bought a ticket as a, I'm going to bring this man I'm going to meet. This is going to be her romantic partner. This is She's creating him to be with her at this event in May. Uh, and I was uh, just like, that's the way to go. You just, awesome. I don't that's know awesome. who's going to have yeah. this ticket. I don't know who he is yet, but I've bought him a ticket. <laughs> yes. Well, for, yeah. for you that are watching, I mean, we're coming up on the time here. Number one is go get your ticket. Commit to be there. Make that commitment. Number two is in the comments here, write down what is your biggest takeaway from today? What are you realizing the most from today? If you can share that with us. And remember, you know, the third thing is that this isn't a profit making uh, event. This is a charity event. So the profits and the proceeds are going to the, the uh, children's hospital and that's going to make a huge impact. Whether you can be there or not, it's a donation. Right. And it's a donation to those kids that can't hear. So when we say be here, H E A R, it it really is a part of that. Um and it's not and, a spelling yeah. mistake. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. See, and that's what I'm gonna do exactly after this show is I haven't even bought my ticket yet. And I'm gonna go buy my ticket right after the show today. So it's um it's be here as a demonstration of my commitment to be there, you know. And uh, I already know I'm there. 
but this is another level of commitment. It's keep bringing yourself into that commitment. I've learned so much today from you guys that you guys are creating a miracle. If, if we had the people that you have already signed up, we're able to enroll just 10 more people each, or let's say even five more people each, the, the entire venue would be full, right? Yeah. So we're not that far off from being able to fill this event and we can't do it alone. The enrollment in this is way too big. We need the help of those that are watching this is buy your own ticket and help others to be enrolled in buying their tickets to step out of the interest group and into the uh, attendees group. Do that. Any other thoughts, guys, as we get to the end of this? I just want to say hi to Matt Smith, who's just made a lovely comment in the yeah. Hey, Matt. Ah, uh, awesome. Great uh, to see I, you. I will. I will. Genu I will genuinely say something about Mr. Smith, knowing that he's on here. Hmm. When when we were running London and that all started and it was like we're going to get 500 people in a room in like three, four months, I I said, this is nuts. I was one of those people that was like, nah, it's too big. Don't don't go that big. Don't go. It, it's too much of a risk. You know what? Kudos to that guy because he had the vision. He had the balls to put it out there and go with it. And he was an inspiration to me and I have learned so much about having the courage to do that from him. Mm. You know, if there, if it wasn't for Matt and London, I am 99.9% .9 sure we wouldn't be doing this. So huge, huge thank you to Smithy for that one. This wouldn't be happening. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And and let it be a lesson. You know, anyone who's out there thinking that they can't do anything big and they can't do anything that is, you know, oh, it's beyond me. Who am I to do that? Sod that. If if Muggins here can go and do all this kind of stuff, let it be a lesson that anyone can. Right. <laughs> if, if Matt can do it, you can do it. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. The owner tells me when I say this, but I'm the cleverest idiot. Right. If an idiot like me can do it, then anyone can. Amazing. Fiona, any final thoughts before we wrap up today? We're a great team, you and I. Yeah. Oh, and I, 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 say that again. I would, be, I would be completely lost without this woman. She has been an absolute rock behind the scenes for me, as does my wife as well, who is the, the quiet one who isn't seen. You know, the amount of hours that. Kate puts up with me dealing with all this. She is a hero as well. So between those yeah. two ladies, yeah. one in the event kind of as my absolute right hand to it, and the other woman as my left hand at home who does everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Kate is not the other woman. Kate is the woman. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is why I'm not on stage, okay? <laughs> 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 that's beautiful fiona any final thoughts i just want to thank you for for hosting this so beautifully and guiding us through with your skills as a host and um yeah, yeah if anyone's thinking they want to come reach out to us talk to us we'll we'll make it happen hmm. if it's something you really want to do let's make it happen yeah yep. beautiful Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up. I hope you'll join us. Uh, is Well, this coming week, we've got Karan Rai coming on as a master class, and we've got more Ooh. joining us in the future. So uh, we will continue to stream these out uh, as you get these. Share them with people uh, that you know would be served by these messages, uh, by these master classes, and by all means, go grab your ticket, even if it means you can't be there participate in some form, buy your ticket and be a part of this event. So thank you for being with us. Go be you, go be beautiful, right? And go be amazing. Be and beautiful. we will see you in the, <laughs> in the next episode. Make it a great day. Thanks.